Good evening, everyone. My name is Katie Olson, and I'm a senior at Chesterton Academy of the Sacred Heart. And I have to begin by pausing and saying thank you. I'll admit, I've dreamed of giving the keynote speech since my freshman year, and now I'm here. And there's so much I should say to the people who have done so much for me and to have made this school what it is. But I'll have to settle with a genuine thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about something I truly love. Let me give you some context. I'm the second oldest of six, and I was homeschooled up until high school. Listen, I loved being homeschooled. It offered me invaluable opportunities for which I am infinitely grateful. But a change of scenery can begin to sound a bit exciting when most of your classmates were illiterate and in diapers. <laughs> So when my older sister, Cecilia, was sent off to this magical school called Chesterton Academy, I was all ears. And let me tell you, my sister isn't the type of person to simply reply fine to the question, how was your day? She told us everything. <laughs> she would fill our dinner table conversations with stories from her day. I knew her classmates and teachers, I knew all the songs she was singing in choir, I knew all the books they read, I knew all the inside jokes, I had her class schedule memorized, and I even knew which classrooms were always too warm and which were too cold. <laughs> to sum it up, I had done my research. And my excitement was that of a, well, freshman. I was very invested in the little moments that seemed to make her smile and I took note of as much as I could, building anticipation for when I could join her and witness this culture firsthand. But by the time it was my turn to join her at Chesterton, I knew something that my sister hadn't needed to, to tell me. I knew who I was, and I didn't like it. I was self-conscious, and I knew it. I was awkward, and I knew it. I was terrified, and I knew it. It's a fearful thing to go into a new environment. And to cope, I had planned how to keep these flaws hidden from these seemingly stoic and saintly people, assuming that I was the only one to have those insecurities. So I walked in th into that school with my head held high by a personality that I thought would fit the mold of Chesterton Academy. How wrong I was. G.K. <laughs> Chesterton says, we men and women are on the same boat upon a stormy sea. We owe to each other a terrible and tragic loyalty. As my ship was headed for uncharted waters, I was lucky enough to have loyal guides and examples at the school. I found nothing but truth in the people around me when I walked through the doors of Chesterton Academy. These people were genuine, and they demanded genuineness from their peers in exchange for loyalty and a tight ship. To my horror, they wanted me to be genuine too to somehow be who God made me to be, but that person I was supposed to be hadn't been on the ship in a while, and I wasn't keen on calling man overboard. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this school has a motto, culture of vitae, or culture of life. It reflects a community that is alive, and it prompts us to flock towards the creator who gave us that life. Through those words, I knew that I wasn't going to be allowed to drown at the hands of who I had told myself I had to be. I was not going to be allowed to live on a path towards a culture of death. And that scared me. But something else intimidated me about this school, and that was the kindness. I was expecting harsh but fair judgment from people who had easily found some hidden source of happiness that was just out of my reach. That was not remotely close to what I found. It was clear where their patience flowed from, because they were slow to anger but rich in kindness. I was in complete awe within the first week of my attendance. Daily, someone would surprise me with an unprompted act of charity. Daily, I would walk by a room filled with laughter or singing, and would quickly be ushered in to join. Daily, I saw a love of something supernatural in these people. Those moments were unique to each day and situation but showed a profound joy and gratitude in my colleagues that I have slowly learned and attempted to imitate. I've begun seeing snippets of who God made me to be and the joy of my classmates. Since that freshman year, 
I knew those memories were ones that I'd want to remember. So I jotted them down on a Google document at the end of the day, and I continue to do so now. That document is now nearing 100 pages. Double space, 12 point, and times in Roman font, obviously. <laughs> I cherish those pages dearly. They are filled with memories that prove to me that this is a special place that has and will form good people for this world. It suggests to me with an outstretched hand that I just might be able to exist in that dream of a world too. I'd like to share two of those moments with you that show the culture that I've been blessed to witness. Listen, I know that I am just another high school kid, and most of you have experienced life much more than me, and now I'm about to read you all my little diary pages. <laughs> but I plead with you to listen. These moments are just a few that have showed me where my priorities should lie, and have convinced me to do my best in leading a life inspired by the lessons taught at this school, because I believe that they can lead to eternal life. The first comes from the very end of my junior year. We had just finished our art final, and the test did not take very long, so we had quite a lot of extra time. You all know what finals week is like. It's exhausting, and by the end of it, you're likely stressed and maybe just a little irritable. Thus, we all sat around, obnoxiously rambling and overthinking our grades and GPAs whilst longing wistfully for summer. But amid the loud, intense classroom, my dear friend and classmate, Catherine Russell, pulled out her rosary, turned to me, and invited me to pray with her. So in our quiet corner, we began to pray. Then Jillian looked over, grabbed her rosary, and joined us. Then Logan joined, then Cecilia, then Patricia, and soon enough, the entire classroom was praying together. I saw my peers gather around, willing to give up their free time to give thanks to Jesus and his mother. This is just one instance that shows the love of prayer here. G.K. Chesterton says, once men sang together round a table in chorus. Now one man sings alone, for the absurd reason that he can sing better than the rest. If our civilization goes on like this, only one man will laugh, because he can laugh better than the rest. My proudest moment as a Chesterton student took place last year at the Diocesan Chrism Mass. Our small but passionate choir was honored with the invitation to provide the music. The Chrism Mass involves the blessing of chrism oil that will be used for thousands of baptisms and confirmations in the following year. 122 priests and 50 deacons gathered together, thank you Nora Velez for counting to take part in this holy event. We provided chants and beloved hymns alongside a professional brass section. The joy and presence of the Holy Spirit was palpable throughout the Mass. Have you ever tried to properly sing O God Beyond All Praising, surrounded by your favorite people while crying and laughing out of wonder, whilst trying not to faint out of excitement and nerves so as to not fall off the choir loft? <laughs> I highly recommend it. <laughs> But to bring back what G.K. Chesterton said, I must argue that this glorious event was not praised by the fact that we could sing any better than the rest, but rather the opposite. We are taught a profound sense of humility in our classes. We are taught that an effort such as singing in a choir cannot be an individual feat. To pull our chairs around a table and to sing a chorus, as Chesterton puts it, without focus on who is better than who, is truly a divine experience. And to use this to glorify God doubles it. These moments give me a special sense of hope in the culture of the community at Chesterton, the culture of life. The people here provoke something the modern individualistic world attempts to cover up. They pointed to a restlessness in my soul that only God can provide rest to. A true community of faithful Christians will not let you live your life unexamined. Because as Socrates says, an unexamined life is not worth living. Thank you for that, Chesterton Academy. For pushing me against the tide of sin and the tide of complacency. G.K. Chesterton says, a dead thing can go with the stream, but only a living thing can go against it. Mankind is made living, 
I mean, our first breath was the one that God breathed into us. But I know how tempting it is to go with this dream. How tempting is it to look around and just wonder if it's real, or if it's foolish to try to love a God that we can't see? In the cold, dead winter, or the harsh trenches of midterms, it seems so hopeless to care if there's a warmer time or a next life, because it's not helping me now. But then, in spite of everything, when the world is too busy shouting to care, a fragile flower, an eternal seed that was sown long ago, finds its way through the frost as it triumphs through its sorrows, and it brings the hope of a holy springtime. Ladies and gentlemen, look around you. These are the seeds that are being sown, and they are growing in a genuine thanksgiving of the culture of life. And so can you. This school means so much to me and has honestly saved my life from a culture of ingratitude, idleness, and grief, a culture of death. I have more love for this school than many things because we are called to love God above all things, and I truly believe that this school reflects God. In these four years, I've seen people change their lives to chase God, and I can guarantee that that will continue to happen so long as this school stands to plant those seeds. These people have dared me to live in God's glory. So now it's my turn. I dare you to let yourself see God and the people he has placed around you, and the youth. I dare you to find hope in them and love them as Christ has loved you. And in doing so, create a community like this one. I dare you to live a culture of life. Thank you.